Sweet, sweet, sweet. I am just working on some skin tones here, trying to figure out what I want. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you mix paint and find skin tones. I have no clue how to do that. <laughs> now, you could tell me I just need to practice. Yes, you do. But practice is for chumps. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it does take a lot of work, and I feel like most of the time I think that I've got it, and then I don't. So, yeah. you know. I'd say I think you do. I'm going to try not to butcher this artwork of yours. It's not mine. <laughs> it's yours. Well, I know, but I copied you. Sort of. Not really, sort of, but okay. Sort of, kind of. Yeah. I'm also watching this live on my laptop. Oh, really? So I can actually see what you're doing, too. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I don't have... I mean, I can, again, I can kind of peek under my little device here and kind of see what you're doing. Yeah, I'm really short, and I moved it to where it's connected to the back of my chair, so it's really difficult for me to see. Oh, I see. Hey, someone saying, what's up? He's a frequent follower and watcher of the my YouTube channel, so. Nice. For everyone who's watching, my friend here, this is Jessica. Nice uh, to meet you all. Right. We've been friends for a long time, and... We've done lives on Instagram, but uh, I said, you know, we need to do it on YouTube because there's more traffic there. Just, I mean, why not? Why not see how it goes, right? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. You started this um, YouTube channel and I feel like it's really taken off. It kind of has. I um. Uh... Sorry. Hey, Daniel Goodwin. Another another person that's followed my channel. Again, it's so shocking to me that anybody follows it, but I'm up to 1,100. That's really good. It's it's weird. Chuck Lee, hey, what's up? This is tricky because I'm trying to like draw and then I'm always checking to see if like in case I miss something. This is a, I know like I'm kind of like oh when you say stuff so that I'm looking up. Right. <laughs> they asked if you're using gouache or acrylics. This is acrylics. I need to branch out, but I haven't. <laughs> gouache is more like a watercolor type, right? Yeah, I think it's kind of a mixed medium. Uh, but yeah. I used to mess around with those in black and white a long time ago. And I mean, I'm not going to say I was any good at it, but it was kind of fun. But I, I kind of gave that up. Well, I don't know why. I've seen some of your paint stuff and I feel like you actually could do it. I don't know about that. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> It's your, yeah, you're the one who makes it happen, buddy. I know it. I knew it had to be somebody because it's not me. No one's here to watch my channel for me, I don't think. <laughs> Stop. Especially after my uh, two weeks ago live that I did. Your drunken live? My drunken one that should never have happened, but you were like, this needs to happen again. It was pretty funny and very entertaining. I mean... Kind of embarrassing, but we had a good time at the time. Me and my brother, man, were we. I kept telling my brother to shut up. I counted. It was like 60 times. You really did. Yeah. I... Was... <laughs> what can I say? I was a little intoxicated. Yeah. I was laughing at the pizza part. I don't know why that one. Just really cracked me up. The pizza part <laughs> where yeah. we got the second delivery. <laughs> I mean, yes. 
you well, it was one just... of those where it said it was delivered, but it wasn't to us. But that, but it was. <laughs> then they sent another one anyway. So funny. What can we say? Classic. So, what colors do you use when you start out mixing? Them? Uh, come up or, you know how do you start mixing those I uh, used blue, blue warm yellow and red that actually makes brown well it makes like a really nasty green color but then you <laughs> add white to it and then it'll turn it to brown so did you kind of stumble upon the method to mix these on your own or did you like look up how like how what colors do you mix to get this um i've looked it up a few times i've messed around with it i've got colors out of a bottle that i can use but i thought i'd take this painting and just try to work on doing it a little bit more myself right that makes sense you can kind of make it your own if you're mixing your own colors yeah and like, I feel like this is my opinion. When I look at people, your skin. Um, I think is he talking about me? I don't. I do like drawing, drawing some comic book stuff, but I've never done any actual comic book art. Like sat down and drawn a bunch. It's not exactly true. Okay, that's not true. But that one was terrible that I tried to do. It was not terrible. It was a thousand years ago, but it was a pretty dang good attempt. I don't know about that, but oh, okay. My... I knew you were gonna bring that up as soon as I said it. Yeah, you're like, oh <laughs> man. I was like, oh, here we go. That was. I did have a story for that one, like a full blown story. I just never anything with it uh, um, the guy mark he's saying he finally caught a live stream he's working on his own comic and you said page 80 did i catch that correctly um page 80 today yeah man that's that's some big work that's a quite a bit of work to do my my book that i just got printed up is 128 pages but I kind of like the idea of if I'm going to make a comic, I'm going to spend a lot of time to make a big story. So it's kind of worth people's investment. You know, 22 pages seems, I don't know. It can be fine, but I want to give somebody like, you know, what, what they, you know, something worthwhile. Right. And, and then just to continue on what we were saying, you I mean, you may not draw comics, but you're certainly uh Hey, look, Lost Illusion is here. Courtney. What up, girl? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you may not draw comics, but you certainly are appreciation. You have appreciation of art and comic type characters and stuff like that. And, you know, right. I mean, I may be the, the comic guy and you're just more of like a fine artist. <laughs> I don't know that I'm a fine artist. Things and stuff. You know, <laughs> I just draw like warrior chicks and like, yeah. Naked chicks. <laughs> and hey, do you make comics? Have you written a short story in the comic book once or twice or at least once? <laughs> oh, I guess I have. That is true. That is that true. Is so you make comics. You wrote a story. That is true. I do have a chapter in book five of Masters. You, in I would know because I had to draw it. Yeah, that is true. You're not wrong. Good point. All good points. All good points. <laughs> I guess I just don't feel like I do as much. Um, sorry, I know I'm shaking the camera a lot. I'm mixing, just yeah. trying to learn with colors. So, um, I was, I guess I just don't feel like I'm like oh a comic book artist. I don't. I mean, I get it. For me, a comic book artist is someone not just drawing comic book characters, but actually makes books. Right, that's what I'm thinking too when I asked that. Hey, Mark, thank you. You said you read my first three books. Um, I appreciate that. I, I've kind of lost track of who's picked up my books anymore, which is a good thing. I guess it's better to have, you know, too many books gone out that I can't keep it straight. But thank you to anybody who's read my stuff. But yeah, I've got uh, book 
five. I just got in the mail yesterday or the day before. It was yesterday. Which I need to get, I need to get you a copy of it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, Daniel. Yeah, comic artist sequentials. That's my opinion. You know, I see a lot of guys on social media like Insta Instagram, and they have thousands of followers, and they're incredibly good artists. But all they do is draw like pinups and single images. And now, sure, they're great, and most of these guys are often better than me. But I'm like, I want to see a story. Right. I feel like with comic book artists too. Um, okay. I feel I. I like drawing that stuff too. Like I can sit and draw one individual picture. Right. Right. And <clears throat> I do some of those for your comic books, but a comic artist actually sits down and draws panel after panel after panel and not just the fun stuff and not just the stationary stuff. And right. So that's kind of what I think of is more of someone who draws a story instead of just you know yeah that that's that's my opinion i've long held that and so many of my favorite professional artists just don't do anything anymore they i mean they'll draw just covers and stuff like that and get paid really well mm -hmm. and i'm like would you please draw a comic man like son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> raw well and i'm wondering if sometimes you get burnt out on it I mean, I can understand because it's not an easy gig. Like, yeah, there's always a blank page sitting in front of you waiting to be filled. But, you know, for me, it's that's the fun. I want to have a book. Yeah. You know, that I've told the story in and people can read that. That's the interesting part to me. Right. Someone saying you're you're stuck on yours because you don't have a story is that the problem? You're uh, you got the idea, but getting the story going is the is that the that the tricky? It is the tricky part, honestly. What yeah, my? What's up? Oh, they were saying they're stuck on theirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Getting the story, getting a story going, is probably the hardest part. Yeah. But once you get going, it kind of, in my, my experience, it just kind of like, just keeps going. Like, you know, once you get the ball rolling, it, you can just keep going and it kind of just, in a way, sometimes starts writing itself. Mm. How to get going. You got to make, get that first, like mo that first bit of momentum going. And that's a tricky part. I'm, I just feel like I'm just too lazy for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, it also comes with uh, having the time. Pure honesty here. I'm just too lazy for it. <laughs> like, you're not going to be for real. Really like this. Um, I guess. What is it? I want to say outfit. That you're drawing on her. Oh yeah. Very metally looking. I can tell like it's supposed to be metal over her breasts, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's basically a metal outfit all the way. You know, but I I've got these little like slats in it, so it kind of like can fold and move. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really like that. Hey Tim Tiley Tilly Tim. How, I'm sorry if I butcher anyone's name. Uh, yeah, I got the fifth book. It's so fun to have that in hand. It's uh, all that effort. It's like a, it's a big moment to wait for it and to finally get it. You were stoked to read it. I feel like I've seen so many parts of it, but never, you know. Obviously, never read it all cohesively together. Well, you will. You've got the first four. Yeah, I do. Okay, right. Okay. I, I. I should have known that, but. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's. it's fine. 
You have lots of fans now. Yes, I guess. <laughs> I'm anxious to get started on book six, but I'm kind of having to force myself to wait because I got the Comic-Con next weekend to prep for and I'm finishing up a bunch of new artwork for that. Oh, yeah, it's true, huh? <clears throat> yeah. I got that gargoyles image, the final colors on it. Oh, did you get it completely done? Yeah, the guy sent me the final colored version last night, and uh, I think it's going to be a big hit with the Gargoyles fans because I think it looks pretty good. Like, I have a lady I work with. She is like my mom's age. She's in her 60s, and she watched the Gargoyles cartoon when it was on. So I showed it to her, and she was like literally like, she, she was like speechless. She's like, oh my God, Rob. Really? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, well, I said, I said, Marilyn, I'll bring you one. She's like, no, I'll buy it from you. I'm like, I will bring you one because she's just the sweetest lady and I love her to death. And she, I mean, again, she's 60 years old. And there was this cartoon in the 90s that she just loved. So that's awesome. I, I'm, I feel like I've seen bits and pieces. My husband loves gargoyles. He always says he wants to get, you know. Oh, really? Kids into it. Yeah, he loved it. And I never watched it. I don't know. Yeah, well, you should. I know. I don't know what my problem is. Hey, Blue Sky Expo, do a Jim Lee background. Spill some ink and smug it, smudge it with tissues. I've watched Jim Lee do those live drawings. And it's crazy the stuff that he does. Um you know, it's it's crazy the the textures that he can do. There's a question for you there, Jessica. I'm sorry, I did not see it. They disappear so quickly on here. I know it's it's kind of hard to keep up and doodle at the same time. <laughs> sorry. What was the question? Chuck Lee says, "The girl you're painting, what is she smoking?" Um, you know what? I assume it's just your classic tobacco cigarette. Gross. <laughs> I don't know, though. So this is actually me doing a painting off of some art that Rob did a while back um, of a gal. And I am not 100% sure what she's smoking. If I had to just decide on myself because I'm the artist... Right. I would say it's, you know, a nice, heavy blunt. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you can say that on YouTube. I think you can. But that's what I would like to say she's smoking. I would say that's probably accurate. <laughs> I mean, the photo reference that was provided to me by the friend in the first place was not smoking anything. She had a lollipop in her mouth. Right. I was going to say, I remember she wasn't actually blowing smoke out. She was just, yeah. but. In the drawing that I did, I decided to do that. Yeah. <laughs> See, now he says, now you made him happy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Tim, it is Tilly. Okay, all right, I got it right. You always pull a Monty Python on the and Holy Grail and say there are some who call me Tim. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> Have you seen that Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Jessica? Uh, more times than I like to admit. <laughs> so, because you like it, or because you're forced to by someone else? It is. Um, my in-laws, family, that, that side's like favorite. Yeah. And so I've seen it a lot for that. It's pretty, it's pretty it's good. Got, it's got some really funny stuff in it. Um, yeah. You know. I remember the first time I saw it, I'd never even heard of Monty Python. And in like 10th grade, high school, there was like one of those Sadie Hawkins things. Where uh -huh. everyone was kind of hooked up randomly. Oh, really? Yeah, this, I don't know if that's how it normally does, but the school just like you had to put your name in that you wanted to be part of it, and they just like generated a list of everyone mixed up. So I got stuck oh. with this group of 
guys and girls that I didn't really know anybody. And so I was super out of place. I was super out of place anyway, because I'm me and I'm <laughs> hyper introverted, nerdy. And I got hooked up with the super hot girl who only hung around with the other cool dude that was there and kind of ignored me. So the best part of the night was when we were, all of us were at this girl's house and somebody put in that movie and I had like, what the hell is this Monty Python? I was crying. Like I had tears in my eyes. It was so funny. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Like the best part is when they're all being chased by the monster. Oh. It's the, that animated part. Like, how are they going to get away? Yeah, Peter has a heart attack and dies until the monster goes away. Yay. That part, um, oh my is God, the I Black Knight. Is that what they call him, the Black Knight? I, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but. Just a flesh wound. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows that part. <laughs> yeah. Just because it's the best part. Oh, no. I just messed up. Did you screw up? I screwed up, but let's Time to throw it away and burn it. Not ink, so I can fix it. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's paint. You can back it out, unlike some of us. Mm-hmm. I'll fix it. Yeah, that's it. it it's, a, it's a classic for sure. No, Monty Python. For sure. So this woman you're <clears throat> inking at this moment. Correct. Um, so she is a character for an upcoming story, not the one that, not Masters In, but a different one you're going to do? Is that? It, basically, I was, because uh, I, I drew this on my last live. I, drew, I did, did the whole pencil. I was kind of explaining it to at least, I think, one person. Um. You're just explaining it to yourself the whole time. Basically, maybe I maybe I was just talking to myself. You know what? <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what someone's saying on here. He says the best part of paint: you can't paint over it. You can paint over it. Yes, you can. You can paint yeah. over it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm going to once I do the next Master's End book, book six, which will be. Well, I was going to say it's the end. I was actually talking with my brother and I might have like a short 20 to I knew minutes. it. No, no, no. I knew Just it. Just some little follow-ups. I might even, I've, I've even thought about the idea of branching out seeing if there's any artists out there that would want to draw a short chapter just to wrap up a few short things. Mm -hmm. Just to put like a final kind of cap on the entire story. And some of it is really dark. And if you know my stuff, it's pretty damn dark anyway. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> you're like, yeah, right. But yeah, I'm gonna take the characters and and uh, basically um, spin them off into a like redesign them and have them kind of be in a new book that's all my own characters. And this is, I mean, this is gonna be. This is basically the Shira character. Okay. This is okay. her redesigned, and. Um, so instead of having long blonde hair, she's got long black hair. Heck yes. Yeah. Right. I know you. I know you're all about the brunette, right? Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. That brunette life. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> this will be interesting to see. I knew you would do another one, though. Can I just say that? Yeah. I even told you when you were like, "Well, this will be the last one." I was like, "I bet you do another one." But... Well. I mean, there's just one, a couple just little things. Like there was a whole chapter that I never even got to do that I really like, oh, I, I wish I could have had a moment to throw this in there somewhere, but I don't know. I'm going to basically have some uh, big monstrous characters come to the planet of Eternia and basically lay waste to it once the main characters have teleported off of it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Really, really just giving away stuff here. This will be like two years from now by the time that comes up. Okay, I'm just saying. Right. That's Courtney, a... she says she loves some dark stories, and that's why we like you, Courtney, because you're one of us. You do. You have some pretty, pretty 
dark, awesome art. Hey, Tim, you talk about old wizard message forums where one person does one page out of a 22 page story. I did that on a website a couple of years ago where it was a, uh, there's a video on my channel of it. It's called the digital webbing group X-Men project where one guy, he did like three pages and then I just kind of continued it. And then I branched out and asked another guy to do another couple pages. And we ended up with like a 60 page comic drawn by like 10 different artists, just our own X-Men comic. And then we branched out and did a second X-Men story. And then we did a complete Hellboy story from beginning to end. Like, I can't remember how many pages. There's a video of it up there. But an entire Hellboy story with everyone contributing. It was super fun. It's like extremely fun to see other people all collaborate on the same project. So that's what I'm kind of thinking of doing. I mean, my brother's going to be part of the, the, like the Master's End Lost Tales is some kind of like... I don't know, a title for it. Oh my God, maybe I should have somebody named Jessica do a little two-page story or something. Oh, maybe. Right. Hey. I don't know if she'll be busy. You'll have to ask. Whatever. You got like, you know, four kids. Whoa. I Tim, were you on, uh, you, were you on digital webbing? Jessica, you didn't forget that you're hanging out four kids, five kids, right? Well, te yeah, technically, I have five kids. Technically. Yeah. Oh, I know. I forget. I, 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 I always kind of accidentally forget that part. That's okay. You don't have to keep track of them. I do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I got a super neat though. Doing that um, whole thing. What's up? That would be really neat, though, doing that. Uh, just you doing all of that for your last book, Master's End book. Yeah, I just, I've always had this idea. I mean, you've read the books one through four. So, you know, there were some gigantic robotic monster creatures that were kind of involved in the story in a small way. And, I was going to have them come back and just like lay waste to everything just to end it definitively. Like this world is over. Everything is transferred over to the world where these guys get teleported to and they're remade in body and mind. And so now they're my characters and just to put a definitive end, like it's over. Yeah. Cause I tend to like to kill off my characters. If uh, I, the, the situation calls for it. That dramatic side of you. I guess. I'm like, oh, I'm so edgelord. Watch me kill people. In my mind. What? <laughs> I mean, it kind of is because it's your imagination. So. It's true. For some reason, I can't see any of the um, comments when they come up. Um, On my screen, like if I... So you're talking about on your laptop? Yeah, it's not coming up on the laptop. Maybe it's because I'm watching it as a viewer. If you, like, on my phone here, if I, like, the, the the messages are not coming up, like, they'll show up when they save and then they fade. But if I touch the screen and move it up and down, they all pop up. So I don't know if, like, if you use your mouse or your, your little, you know, mm. maybe it'll make them pop out. Hmm. It's not showing anything, but I am as a viewer on here, so maybe that's one. Yeah. But I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel Goodwin, I don't necessarily <laughs> like killing them. I, it's, I mean, I'm kind of exaggerating a little bit in that way, but I've had yeah. some moments where I'm like, this is what needs to happen. And there's been some characters I've, you know, ended and I kind of wish it I didn't because there was other stuff I want to do with them. But in the moment, I'm like, this is this is what needs to happen there. And that is definitely going to be a theme in book six. Because... Do you think you're going to regret it? No. I mean, well, there's a little bit because you, you already know, like, some of the characters that are not going to make it out of it. And I kind of like, I really like this character and I don't want to be done with them. But the dramatic moment building up to it where it happens, I'm like, it has to happen. It, it the whole emotional core of everything hinges on that moment. So, yeah, you know, and I know I've told you about it, so it's going to happen. 
And then the character becomes kind of a, like a martyr, a memory. Right. People remember this guy and remember what he did and what he stood for, he or she or who or whatever. Yeah, I was going to say, you're giving it away again. Can't help you. Sure, 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 sure. Let's see. Uh, some guy, uh, one of the guys he's saying here, maybe click on chat or minimize the laptop screen. Maybe just to get the text coming. Cause again, I'm looking at it on my phone, but. Good call. I hadn't thought about that. Oh, I can see it now. Oh my Lord. Thank Dirt you so Dirt much. Dirt. This guy has felt, I am so blind. It's on the side. Oh, wow. Wow. We're not that would have been fun you, but we will. What? I said we ain't trying to make fun of you, but Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're trying to make fun of me. It's fine. I'm not the best with electronics. We all know this. Chuck Lee, yeah, I was on digital webbing, but I always heard of Pencil Jack, uh, the website, and they always seemed to kind of go back and forth as which one was the um I don't know, the more relevant one. They kind of seem to do the same thing. Uh, sometimes I got the vibe that Pencil Jack was the the more prominent website. And I know some people have gotten professional work from there. But I also know Digital Webbing produced. I think Ryan Otley came from Digital Webbing. I know he was on there. Um, but, um, yeah, though it's kind of crazy, those websites, how they're just long since done. No one does websites anymore, really. It's all this social media stuff, right? Yeah, social media is fun, but sometimes I kind of wish we didn't have it. I don't know. Oh, no, no. I 100% agree. I think social media has spread everyone's mental illness all over the planet. <laughs> and it's being hailed as Live your true authentic self, even if you're insane. <laughs> That's why I think the 90s were the pinnacle of human civilization. We got a little bit of awesome technology, but no social media to fuck everyone up. So. That's true. I mean, so we just kind of had to deal with life when we had to get outside and go go play and ride bikes and stuff. But you could still come and have and awesome read movies. And, right, right, yeah. Now, I say that being a pretty avid user of social media. Oh, me too, every day. But you are limited. You don't do, like, Facebook. Like, you don't. That's true. You were smart enough to put that away. You're like, I am done with Facebook. And I you left, Facebook. and you never came back. And I don't blame and you. And it's, it's been the best, like, what? I don't know, five years of my life or whatever it's been. <laughs> Right. You're like, it's so quiet. I feel like Facebook is so busy. Oh, and just so much, just so much garbage. Yeah. Sorry for all you Facebook lovers, but it's not me. <laughs> You're above that kind of thing. I just don't have the stomach for it, I guess. Yeah. I only use it to basically keep in contact with people that I know. Yeah. It's an easy way to kind of, you know, make a, someone who you never see on a daily basis feel not too far away. Right. But I feel like you can do that even with Instagram now. And yeah. I like Instagram because it's mostly pictures. And I think that's why. Videos yeah. and pictures. Yeah, I agree. Most people aren't putting long ass posts all over the place. <laughs> and the advertisements get me too. I get sick of it. Yeah. Really, really do. <clears throat> All right. I think I've got like basic stuff down. I'm going to have to go do like the detail stuff. Is it working well for you? You feel like it's coming along or are you, are you struggling? Um, I don't dislike it yet. <laughs> that's a big step if you're working on a piece of art and your first instinct is to not hate it then I'm like alright I'll keep going yeah exactly I mean we'll see how it turns out I feel like at least this is my opinion whenever I go to do painting 
it always looks really rough in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Painting just always looks, at least my paintings, just very, very rough for a while. I've uh, I've had drawings that I, I was certain, like, this is just absolutely garbage so i just kind of kept noodling at it and then somehow like it kind of catches up with you and you're like oh okay there it is it's okay mm -hmm. but yeah just as often it's like nope this is junk so put it away start over yeah it'll work <laughs> i almost always hate everything i'm doing so i remember a thousand years ago when we worked at that old job and i was doing those space spray paintings and you tried it but it wasn't working and you said that you got mad and threw it away because it wasn't working and I was like because you're doing it in your garage in the middle of winter it's cold the paint doesn't dry so it drips <laughs> <laughs> I did do that and you know what I I spray painted like the biggest piece of cardboard and it ran and I was so upset over it yeah. But I'd never done it before. And looking back, it's like, you don't do that the first time you've tried something. Like, calm down. That's, yeah. But I haven't what? changed much, so. <laughs> I tried doing that space spray painting when I just saw it online somewhere a million years ago. I'm like, I can do that. Yeah, you did great on it, too. You did some really cool. Well, the first couple I tried absolutely did not work. And I was like, oh, all right. This is not working. <clears throat> Mr. D man, hey man, what's going on there? Yeah, Daniel Goodwin. He says, thumbnails, this is gonna be awesome. Pencils, this sucks. Inks, awesome <laughs> or passable. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That is <laughs> it's exactly it's like, yeah, the thumbnail's like, oh, I'm gonna nail this one. This one's gonna be great. Oh, I can't wait to do this. And you start drawing it, and he's like, oh no. Why did my thumbnail that took five seconds to draw look better than the one I've spent three hours on? <laughs> that happens all the time. True, true. Mr. Oh. D-Man, you've been watching He-Man and She-Ra cartoons on YouTube. Are you talking about the old 80s ones? Because... They're very nostalgic, but man, are they kind of hard to get through because <laughs> they're so like, they're so childish and they're, they're of their era. They're exactly what they were always made to be for, but yeah. <laughs> Jack Lee's saying, I already asked that question. She's smoking a blunt. We've established this, <laughs> right? Jess? Yes, because I thought she looks said, relaxed, right? You could have said it's cold outside where she's at, and it's just her breath. But you're like, mm, what nobody, you nobody believes that shit. Stop <laughs> right now. What's going to believe that? For real. But you're like, oh, no, no, no. She's smoking some some green. She's just trying to relax. Let out a little she stress. I think there's probably more people that can relate to that than <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say. What if I confessed and told you I've never tried that? Really? Would you believe me? Because it's true. Oh, uh, yeah, I would believe you. I don't think you'd lie about something like that. Yeah, I don't I don't have like a, I'm so cool, I've totally smoking up. It's just never really come up, <laughs> and I've never sought it out. But um, there's a little part of me that's like, I need to try this. I need to, I should just try this, so... And believe me, I know plenty of people that will hook me up. Yeah. And then I'll probably do it wrong. I don't, like, I don't know how to do this. I'll try snorting it or something. <laughs> it's different. Um, you know, I will say this. Like, if you end up trying it whenever, whenever. Um, one of those things where um, it's just different. It's different. And it's, I thought it would be like, just smoking but it is different and then i ended up kind of liking it for a really long time oh snap <laughs> being a little bit we might have worked together 
You were not a little pothead when I knew you, what, what was it, about 14, 15 years ago? <laughs> Did you not know David? Are you kidding me right now? Yeah, I was. No, but if I had to guess, if you're like, which one of these two is a... Uh... Both. Both. And we used to put it in cigarettes because we didn't want our uncle, or my uncle, it's his dad, to know. Right. And so we used to wrap it in cigarettes. We'd dump the tobacco out of the cigarettes and put it in there and take the filter out. And it was a whole ordeal. But I guess in our heads, if we got caught smoking tobacco, it wouldn't be so bad. I don't know. <laughs> And like looking back, like, why not just not get, what the heck? Why did you go through all that? You were adults. But anyways. <laughs> well, yeah, someone's saying here, he's saying about how, you know, the stages of drawings, you know, good or bad. He's like, because your brain fills in the details when there aren't any present. You're a hundred percent correct. I've, I've mm -hmm. kind of understood that, like an idea in your head. I, I run into this with a lot of wannabe comic artists and it got i say that sounding really pretentious i don't mean to sound insulting, pretentious. but right <laughs> right but it's like everyone's like i have this great idea i'm like well then do it but once you have to sit down and make it suddenly all these gaps in your ideas you know oh yeah uh, yeah all those gaps in your ideas suddenly you have to fill them in and suddenly you realize you don't have those ideas then you come to a screeching halt so, yeah, Mr. D-Man says she's smoking the marijuana. Mm -hmm, the marriage marijuana is bad. You shouldn't smoke marijuana. <laughs> drugs are bad. <laughs> you shouldn't do drugs. Yeah, I feel like for me, I can have an image in my head of something I want to draw or paint or whatever. And I'm. this should be easy. Like, I know exactly how I'm going to do it. And then I sit down and I do it. and. I go, oh, wait, how am I going to make, how am I going to depict this or this or this? Right. And it's not working. Yeah, this should, this, my head, this was super simple. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then it becomes bullshit. And I'm just angry. <laughs> and it goes into the pile of things we call abandoned projects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I think we've all got a pile of abandoned projects. Like, I'm going to get back to that. True. 10 years later, you're like, I'm not going to throw that away because I'm going to get back to that. It's true. <clears throat> what are we looking at here? What's that? What's this we're listening here to? I'm going to turn it up and you have to guess. Oh. I recognize it, but I can't tell you what it is. Can you even tell me the band? No. Oh, Jessica, we're, we're not friends anymore. I'm sorry. I guess it is not quite your generation. Well, I. Or, who is it? I'm going to wait for somebody in the comments to say it. Okay. Mr. D, man, you got folders full of those abandoned projects. Somebody tell this girl who this is. I should know because I... Chuck I... Lee knows. I'm worried that we'll get copyright claimed by, you know, if I play this music because I know that can happen. So if my, if the live stream goes off, we'll just be right back on if the YouTube algorithm decides to go, hey, you're playing copyrighted music shuts it off yeah i feel like i i know i've heard it i just can't and the worst part about it is i'm sitting here looking at a collection of like 70s 60s albums right here and i can't figure it out well you should have been like an 80s rocker chick we all know that you were born out of time so sad i should have married axel rose <laughs> you should have married axel rose see checkley knows it what's up okay say what it is mr lee Here's the best part. Oh, it's Nirvana. That's fair. That's fair. 
sorry I had it too loud. I was jamming. What would you say? Oh, I said they said it's Nirvana. And I'm yeah. going to say it's something. Nirvana doing uh, Unplugged, like the best performance they ever did. I'm going to say something that's going to take a lot of people off. I don't really like Nirvana that much. That's it. Go away. I'm going to I'm gonna block you. I know. It's terrible, isn't it? I really, I never gotten into them. I like some of their stuff, but... It took me a long time to understand. And I mean, I'm not going to say I'm their, their biggest, biggest fan ever, but I do, I do like a lot of their stuff. I respect them as a band. It's just not one I sit down and listen to very often. You'd rather listen to Axl Rose and wish you were married to him. <laughs> I, you know what? I actually listen to the Bee Gees a lot. You have always said you're an old soul. I listen to the Bee Gees all of the time, uh, Rolling Stones. But for whatever reason, I never got into Nirvana. That's all right. I went no one's perfect. <laughs> What's that? But it, I did recognize the song, and it does sound like a good one. So maybe I need to go back and rethink, you know, my music tape taste i don't know about that <laughs> we all like what we like how do you like this um ink work you're doing um i like it i uh i keep using the stupid brush pen and i keep forgetting that i've used it and it's wet ink so i keep smudging shit everywhere oh <laughs> Like, I got a smudge there, and I got some smudges there. Because for whatever reason, this stuff doesn't dry very fast. But, um, I mean, I'm not so much concerned about, like, the technique I'm doing as much as do I like to design enough to go with it or change it. Yeah. And I, I think I like it so far. It looks really good. I know what you did this off of. Yeah, I showed you that reference. Yeah, and I feel like it, it looks really good for... I mean, when you get girls with arms like that, I'm like, all right, there's a warrior babe. She's the reference for the comic. Yeah, for real. <clears throat> what level of musculature in a woman do you think is too far speaking as it grows or like there's a part for it in your brain where you're like it's it's almost too much you know because i've seen some guys be like oh why does a girl have muscle she's unattractive i'm like dude are you kidding me <laughs> <laughs> um so for me like, just my opinion um i have never been someone who's had like been muscular i do think girls are attractive if they're toned right like they're toned. um but i also really like the feminine look too sure and i i have seen women who um i mean that's what they do right they body build and and it's not my cup of tea. It's not something that I find super hot, obviously. But <laughs> I will I balance. Yeah, I will say I think that um, I think that part of it really just comes down to um, you know how they feel in their skin. So if that's like how someone feels, like they feel attractive. <laughs> they're very muscular if someone's just like i'm just you know more into the tone look but they carry it well because they feel yeah. attractive i think that means a lot yeah and i certainly don't think that my opinion of the way someone else makes themselves look matters at all it doesn't but um <clears throat> you know yeah i think that there's a broad a range of ways that a woman could attractive and there's no one way but i've just ran into guys that are like when you see girls with like some kind of muscle tone on their arm or something like that and they're like super turned off i'm like what why, why is that a turn off 
Yeah, I don't really understand that myself. Um, Mr. E Man, China. Yeah, that was that's too far. I'm not into her, but Wiley J draws lean beef patty. I know that girl on Instagram, and I think she's a perfect example of balanced, of muscular and still feminine. Like I know who that is. I've actually done a few sketches of her from her Instagram. I don't know who Carrie June is. I might have to write that down and go look it up. <laughs> I mean, you can have a character that's like a like a like a Viking type warrior girl. She's got to look strong too. Right. I guess my my thing is I still feel like there is I think the look that I prefer as a woman is still feminine but in good shape toned arms but not huge that's my right. opinion um thick thighs that stuff yes i think the bigger the better on those things but <laughs> hell yeah but as far as like upper body that's yeah that's yeah i was showing my friend who uh um, you know who she is that's got the muscular arms and mm -hmm. I was showing an example of some girls that have like that really big upper body like the they flex and they got like pectoral muscles and I'm like oh that's that's just a little bit too much it's it's a little bit too far for <clears throat> but again I know a woman who she actually lives out this in this area and she is just so so toned and she has, I mean, huge arms, bigger arms than most guys I know. Right. And I will tell you this, she's gorgeous. I, she's extremely attractive and I think she's super sexy. So again, I don't know. I feel like it depends on the person. Yeah. There's that. Like I've, I've always like, there's, you, there could be certain things that you, a person likes about you know, the opposite sex or whatever you're into and the things that you're not into, but then you can run into somebody that's kind of built almost the way you would not like, but you're kind of into them. <laughs> like, Oh, you carry it. Well, you rock it. Like, right. Oh. That's what I mean. I, I really think it just depends on the person, you know, everybody teases me because, you know, I guess a, obviously a lot of women like, you know, the big strong guys and, I am, everybody teases me because I like skinny, skinny guys. Really? Uh, hey, uh, Chuck, you know, you're what's her ancestry? I'm just curious. You don't have to answer. You say, who, who are you referring to? Like, who are you asking? What's her ancestry? Are you, who about, who are we talking about here? Um, Mr. D-Man or no, Wiley Draws. He says, most men I know like everything from petite to BBW. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. The guys are easy to please. I don't know about all that. But... Wow. You're not saying that men can't be just single-minded pigs? Because <laughs> I'm a guy and I'll say that. I think both sexes have the ability to That's... be shallow. Viking Barbie, they say. That's a that's a good description. I like Viking Barbie. Yeah. I feel like the Viking women don't really really didn't look how they're depicted on television. <laughs> it's all right, as long as they got those uh Viking braids. I guess. You've done that. I've seen you with your hair like that, and that's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun stuff. Looks super complicated, though. Does it? I mean, I don't know how. Looks like there's like a thousand steps to take to get there. Just practice. Just practice. I believe Chuck Lee is asking you, Jessica, what your ancestry is. Mine? Yeah. 
because you're not you're white girl. Huh? You're not because you're not just a white girl. <laughs> so I mean, I'm mostly my ancestry. I guess I'm mostly Scottish and English. Technically, my mom my mom's side is Scottish and Scandinavian, but my dad's side is English and Native American. So, because I think some a lot of that, a little bit more of that Native American kind of is present in you than I mean, when I met you, I wasn't like I thought there was some you know kind of something else to you besides everybody says that, like, yeah, I guess that, which is kind of funny because I look like my mom, I feel like more than. I'm darker complected than my mom, but that's interesting. Yeah, I have two different lines. So I have family who um, is Meswaki, which some people know as like Fox Tribe, and then Cherokee. Right. Which is the most. I was going to say, I can see, I mean, there's some of that present here. I can, I can see that it's, you know. It's there. What about you? I don't know if I've ever even asked you. Oh my God. I could not be. My, you could date my ancestries back to when the Anglos met the Saxons. Oh, wow. <laughs> Anglo Saxon, as in purely white. I mean, <laughs> I don't know exactly what it is, but it's just as, you know, white European, whatever. Well, you say it like that, but that's still a neat cultural thing. I mean, everybody comes from somewhere. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm just, I don't have like, I don't know. To me, it's more interesting. Like you're like, Oh, I've got some Cherokee in me. And it, it looks that way. Like in a, in a little bit, like there's something there. And I don't have anything interesting like that. I'm just, I'm just me. That's still, that's still neat. You know, Chuck Lee says he would have thought you were Spanish. Oh, okay. You know what? I have also been asked if I'm Spanish a lot. Absolutely. Like a lot? <laughs> a lot. Uh, when I used to bartend, um, I actually worked with a uh, Latina woman and everybody thought I was her sister. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. And so oh, we just huh? started saying it. We just started. Saying yeah. It. So. That's awesome. That's funny. I what made you think that? I mean, you can just see my hands the way I talk. I don't know. Well, I, I put up that picture. Oh, oh, okay. I'm like interesting that people are asking from my hands. <laughs> you're like, you I got pale skin. I mean, I'm pretty white. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. no, I put up that picture of uh, us side by side because I'm like. Why not? It's the first time we've done this on YouTube. So I'm like, yeah, let's draw an audience. And no one particularly responds to my ugly mug. But um, when there's a pretty girl, it's, people tend to like, oh, what's that? Oh, stop. Oh, stop. <laughs> That's you know what? Makes I think sense. I'm right. You say you think you're right? I think I was right. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. I appreciate people taking an interest in. Little old me. Little old you. You're so fast when you do this inking. Like, I just think I just get so much anxiety with inking. I must. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Mr. D-Man, Latino woman with a little, like, lovey face. Yeah, I've, uh, I've long since had a, shall we say, a healthy appreciation for the ladies of the Latina descent. A hundred percent. Oh, yeah. Anybody seen uh, that movie Desperado back when it came out? And then the first time Salma Hayek came walking across the street in the movie and like the freaking cars crashed behind her because people were looking at her. Dude, I was like, oh, I'm in love. I don't know who this woman is, but that right there, that is that right there. There it is. <laughs> that, that's it right there. There I'm, I'm in love. And you know what? She's like 50 something years old and she's as hot now as she ever was. Oh. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> you see that comment that he just wrote? I did. I did. That's awesome. You know what? I'll take it, brother. 
Oh my what, god. What? It, yeah. Hey, what's it? Uh, that movie Tropic Thunder with Robert Downey Jr. He's like, everyone's a little bit gay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh my gosh, yes. I made my day. Yeah, don't sell yourself short, Rob. Jeez. Too late. Too late. I sold myself short a long time ago and there's no going back. No refunds. No refunds. <laughs> sold myself. <laughs> Oh, wow. I was going to, I mean, I had a comment a second ago and I can't remember what it was. The momentary uh, homoerotic humor kind of threw you off. Yeah, it was about the Latina woman. Uh, I was talking about Salma Hayek and how she is hot as hot as she ever there was. was. Oh, I was going to say, though. <clears throat> also, one of your favorite scenes um, from Dust Till Dawn. Good Lord Almighty. We all know that one. Yeah, yep, yep. Oh, man. I remember years ago, maybe this is why I'm divorced, but I showed that to my wife. I was like, look, this is the hottest scene ever committed to film. It really is, though. <laughs> I was like, no, look. And she's like, and she's like, but why is this hot? Like, what's so interesting about it? But I'm like, look, she's dancing. She's, she's dancing hot. on the table and she's super hot. <laughs> she's like the world's hottest lady in the in the ever, and she's like, "All right, if you say so." I'm like, "I'm sorry, I'll turn it off," and then I didn't. <laughs> Am I the one that just doesn't get like offended by that kind of stuff? Okay, <laughs> actually, you know what? One time I did get offended, uh, because my husband did make a comment about, oh, like he could never get Megan Fox, and I was like, "What are you saying about me?" Like, okay, I guess I'm not as hot as Megan Fox, which I know I'm not, but. Oh, I just, come on. I let myself get offended. <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part, I don't. I mean. Someone's saying, says, I have that effect on the ladies. I hope so, brother. I hope you do. The <laughs> Ryan Reynolds effect. Now, I was going to say, like, I know several ladies that are deeply afflicted with the Ryan Reynolds thing, except the one that's on camera with us right now. Yeah, don't like, don't have a thing for Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> he just doesn't do it for you, which like I, I said, I, I'm not gay, but for him, I might be. I don't know what my problem is. Everybody does, too. Say, we don't judge you, but I can't say that with a straight face. We're going to 100% judge you. But you do judge me. All right. I just won't judge you harshly. <laughs> no, I have weird taste. It's fair. I mean, you want to marry Axl Rose. Okay, not now, but if I could go back in time, and let's just, we all know he's a major douchebag, but. Oh, I don't even know about that. I mean, I don't know that much about him, but. <laughs> it's usually a sausage party of me. It usually is, 100%. He's not wrong. Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so it's true. like you could be at a party with a bunch of dudes, and it could be kind of like fine but boring, but the instant like a girl shows up, suddenly it's a party. We're like, yeah. <laughs> we all turn into a bunch of apes. Like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, but yeah. Me and you've been doing live streams for what, like a month now. Yeah. Maybe a little longer. We've done four. Yeah. Five? Um, I would say at least maybe more so, than that. Yeah. Doing it on Instagram and I got more attention over here. Like I'm, you know, like, I get attention, but, you know, part of the fun is to have the interactions and the conversations. Yeah. Because it helps generate questions and stuff that maybe we don't think of. So we're like, oh, let's talk about that. Right. As hard as it may be to believe, I'm not very good at conversation. I think you are. I think I'm like the standard introverted type. Like, I'll keep my mouth shut, but once you get to know me, I won't shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love the disappointment. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know all about that. Rob. That is true. He's not wrong. That's a good point. Well, Mr. D Man there, who's glad that we don't have just a sausage party. I, I know that every morning that I put up uh, one, of my, one of my videos goes up. That man will have a comment or two every time first one on the deck. You oh, know? wow. Like, like, 
Like top fan right there. That's awesome. Well, that's awesome. I I am the worst. I am really behind in watching your videos, but I try. Like I say, I don't expect. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> but I do feel like you really have done some really neat and interesting ones. And it's it's fun to watch. Well, I, I try. That's it's funny to see what people respond to and what people kind of don't care about. And, yeah. um, but you never can really tell. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm struggling with the design justifying having like all this armor on, but then like bare skin right here on her ass and upper thighs. Mm-hmm. I mean, why would, like, the metal armor not continue all the way if we're talking, you know? Because it's a comic book and you may want to see her ass. I mean, all right. I'm so glad you said that because I know that's the answer, but I'm looking <laughs> for validation. I mean, have you seen some of the ridiculous get-ups? Oh, hell yeah. Let me. I've got this picture on my wall right here drawn by my favorite artist, Adam Hughes, right there. That's Brent Sonia. Oh, yeah. That chainmail bikini. Why does she wear a chainmail bikini? Because chainmail is supposed to protect you. Well, you, everybody knows that everybody's just going for the boobs and the... I mean, the probably. Whenever you're in war. Duh. Oh. You gotta be careful what you gotta protect the important parts. You had a limited amount of chainmail. <laughs> so she put it in the most logical places. <laughs> I also have an idea where this armor of hers will like it can like extend and cover her fully if she needs to but she wants to like go to the beach and just have a personal day you know <laughs> yeah okay yeah yeah uh -huh. good justification rob yeah Mr. Mark says uh, it takes a lot of courage to draw and paint in front of an audience. It is. I had. I've had to just set aside my own like. I don't know, my fears because yes, <laughs> you know it, it's kind of nerve wracking. I'm like I just I can't think about it. Like I try to imagine there's 12 people um, staring over your shoulder watching you do this. Like I couldn't function, but somehow doing it like this, it's not quite as bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, even for the few times that I've done it with you, I get straight anxiety. <laughs> right? It can. Yeah, someone's saying, he's like, okay, but don't forget, Conan basically runs the show in a loincloth. And I get that, I do. But in these fictional worlds where women are sexualized so much, I think it's like, I want to keep a balance of sexy, but not gratuitous. Mm. I'm all about the, the sexy and attractiveness, but not like where it's all like button boob shots like that. I'm like, I, I can't do that. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. No, I uh, get what you're saying. Daniel Goodwin says Rob's videos are poor Rob Liefeld. He knows when I go on hard on the Rob Liefeld. You do go hard on Rob Liefeld, but it's deserved. This is what's great is because you don't really read comics. And before my channel, I don't think you had ever heard of this Rob Liefeld guy. But now that you've watched my videos, you're, you've been like, why is this guy popular? Well, I actually like, realize I've had some of his comics. Oh, shit. What have you had? Uh, well, I definitely. Well, OK, I'm assuming I have because I had a lot of the Deadpool stuff. Well, he did very little of it. He originated the character, basically, mm -hmm. but he didn't do too much with it because when that character was created and his popularity took off, Liefeld went off and went and formed Image Comics and did his own creator own thing. Now, he's come back to Marvel to work on Deadpool a lot. Yeah. So I guess it depends on when you had what you had that maybe it was stuff by him. Fairly old stuff. Um, cause I, I think I told you where I got my comics from. I'm sure you did, but I'm also sure I forgot. 
Okay. Well, some friends you turned out to be. Right. Yeah. Thanks for listening, Rob. Uh, no, but I I got them from that um, attic. A lot of them. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, that guy died, and he had an attic just full of comic books. And so I went to help naturally clean out. You got comics, sir. You're, you're the dead sir's family. <laughs> yes. And so I ended up going and helping. And then they said, hey, you could take some of these. And so they gave me a couple of boxes. None of them were worth anything because they definitely had somebody there who knew about comics. And anything that was worth anything was sold for the estate. Yeah. But. Still. Hey, a pile of free comics from a dead man is a pile of free comics. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like, I'd take, did you say you still have a random box of comics in your garage that your landlord's left? I know. And I feel like I'm, I'm really struggling with whether or not I should. Yes, you should. Open it or not. Well, and I haven't. <laughs> My husband was just like, it's just comic books. I said, really? He said, yeah. And it's my landlord's. And I'm like, oh, should I do this? Hey, there's no harm in at least looking. Because what if you find a, a mint copy of Superman number one and then suddenly you're a millionaire? But then I don't own it. And I'll just be sad. No, oh, ownership is like nine-tenths of a loss. So. It's true. They don't even live in the state. Oh, I'm just trying to help you out. You never know what treasures are waiting in the Box garage. You Box of just let me into your garage and they disappear. <laughs> right. Uh, I don't know. I need to I need to go out there. It's just uh, I gotta get up on the ladder. I actually probably will not do it myself. I was gonna say, don't take your pregnant ass up there on a ladder, please. Yeah, <laughs> I don't wanna get the the text message like, oh she fell. <laughs> Thanks to you. I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. Yeah, like you pushed her. She didn't want to do it. She was very <laughs> conscientious about being careful, but then you pushed her up. Yeah, yeah. All for some comic books. You are the comic man. I mean, I know 100% whether I'm going to just take them or just look at them. My ass would have been out there looking through those in a hot second immediately. I'm like, I'll just, I can look. I can look at anything. That's true. Oh. I get this feeling they don't care about the stuff that's here, but they don't live close enough to move it. Yeah. And so they just leave it here. They're like, you can rent this place, but don't touch the stuff in our garage. It's ours. I'd be like, um. Yeah, that's what it is. It's really like that. My ass? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the proper response to that. Mm. Yeah, they also have a giant canvas. Okay, tell me this isn't a little bit weird. And I also want to cut this. Okay, there's a canvas that's from, it's probably a seven foot tall canvas, four foot wide out there, wrapped in a, in a um, tarp and like right. all like stapled together so you can't like open it. I'm like, what the hell is this? Man, I would have that shit open so fast. I really kind of want to open it and just see. And then I'm also like, I don't know, nervous about it for some reason. Like it's like a painting possessed by evil and you're going to free the evil spirits? I don't know. Like, I'm like, <laughs> like, did I just write a movie script? <laughs> oh my gosh, I think you did. I think I did. Let's start working on this story idea. There's a painting in the garage, and she she didn't know what she was about to unleash. Secret painting. Secret painting, right? We can make this movie for like on a, a two million dollar budget. So <laughs> me up with the put me up with the movie studio, and we'll open it. You know, if it's not something scary enough, we'll just you know draw something else. Or I something. think, yeah, it's Dorian Gray's painting. Oh, yeah, exactly. Dorian Gray's painting. Oh no, could be. Yeah. What if it's like the devil's painting and it's, you like release them onto the world and you, you like you unleash the apocalypse or something like that. And then you have to spend the movie like, I don't know, finding the cup of Christ to put them back in there or some shit like that. 
I don't know. I mean, saying, there's here somewhere. That, they make movies about giant sharks. Like who was it who wasn't sure about the story for their comic book? I think we might have just written it for you. Hey, right? <laughs> See? <laughs> Yeah, Mr. D-Man, he says, I don't buy new comics anymore. I go to the straight to the 50 cent boxes. Like, for real. Like, there's this mall just around the corner that has, like, it's like a hobby shop in the mall with, like, music and shit. And they got all these long boxes. And I've only been there once. But I just, I last time I was there, I picked up, like, 20 comics for, like, $3. And it's all old shit. Because that's, to me, that's the only thing that's good anymore is the old stuff. Besides my comic masters and issue five out today. <laughs> It's a little plug there. I'm just saying. I've actually sold two of them. Oh, nice. no. Three. Yeah. What? That's awesome. I know, right? Well, I, I have a microscopic fan base and a couple people like, they're like, let me know when they're here. I'll, I'll hook you up. And so they already sent me the money. So I got to mail them out tomorrow. Oh, nice. I have fans. Well, all righty then. <laughs> Playing guitar in the background there. Some bluesy stuff I got going on. Yeah. Oh, wow. 50 mini craters. Now I have to get out a ruler to draw a sword. Oh, yep, yep. Fun stuff. You just don't want to wing it? Try it. I'll just freehand the straight edge. Some people do that and it actually works really well, but oh, not my would not work well for me. Yeah, Daniel Goodwin says 50 cent box or indie creators doing stuff online. Yeah, yeah. That's I've I've, I've supported a few Kickstarters recently and um, mostly it's all independent stuff. I just I don't care to see what Marvel Comics is doing with the X-Men anymore. I miss the characters, as lame as that might sound, but they're not the characters I knew anymore. But that's just kind of the nature of the beast, I think. You kind of age out. Makes sense. Because eventually they start repeating stories. Like in the comics, a character will like go through this whole character arc, and they've grown you know, and, but then it's 10 years later and some writers like retells the story. You're like, they've already been through this. We've, we've seen this. Why are we watching it again? It's because it's these corporate characters that can't change because they have to keep doing it forever. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Daniel Goodwin says, no, man, I miss them too. They're not the same anymore. I like, whenever I do these videos of mine where I'm like going through these old X-Men books by Jim Lee or whatever, I'm like, oh man, this was so magical at the time. And like, I just put up a video yesterday of this comic called The Curse of Spawn. Now, I'm sure you know the Spawn character, I assume. Me? Yeah. Yes. Well, he did a second book called The Curse of Spawn, which was like a whole other character. And it was just to tell a new story on a new Spawn character. And I collected it for like, 10 or 15 issues, something like that. Uh -huh. And I hated every issue of it. But I, I, at the time, I couldn't admit to myself that I thought it sucked. Because it, they're supposed to be cool. Like, these are cool comics. But I'm like, these are terrible. So I go on kind of a rant on it. I even tell people, like, because some people on my videos are like, if you don't like this, why are you talking about it? <laughs> you know? And I, I'm like, because they're books that existed. They're out there for a conversation. And I literally say, so if you don't like my opinion on it, you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. I just said that to the random nobody who might have a problem. Like, if you hate these com comics so much, why are you talking about them? It's like, I'm not here just to only kiss ass. What? I'm sorry, what's that? There's been one or twice. One, once or twice, this guy was like, sounds like you're just jealous. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. Jealous, I can objectively look at something that looks terrible. I'm not jealous that I actually draw shit that looks like what it's supposed to be. Wiley J draws says, I got a box of 100 comics for 50 bucks at a yard sale. Oh, Spectacular. No. 
Spider-Man number one, a Star Wars number one, made my money back on those two. Hell yeah, dude. That's what I'm like. God damn it, Jessica. Go get in your garage. Get oh your husband God. after we get off this stream. Oh you my go God. get <laughs> All right. I'll go. Watch me like get it down and he was wrong and it's not comic books or something. And then you'll be more disappointed than anybody. <laughs> You know what? At least the question will have been answered. That's true. That's true. Okay. You're like, it's not a comic. It's a box of Playboys from the 70s. <laughs> that might be just as interesting. I'm like, well, I'm like, well I mean, what, uh, like, where I'll are those? Just, just bring them over. <laughs> just, just get them. Just, just go through them and see what their value might be. <laughs> I was like, are there any Latino women? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I can handle disappointment. I can't handle not knowing. <laughs> the not knowing is what that's the problem. I gotcha. <clears throat> oh. Cause just once I want to go into a place and be like, there's a box of comics and you can have it. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Not that I need any more. I have ten million. But you know what? I'm glad I have ten million comics because now it's like material for the youtube channel i was gonna say i mean you do but it's part of what you do so it is. that actually checks out yeah right <clears throat> yeah i've i wish i i wish i was more into comic books but i also feel like by the time i was old enough it just wasn't as popular i don't know <clears throat> well you did miss the the big boom of the 90s because you were like you know a child yeah it's true i did but that's okay but you like some of them you you read some you go you look at some you read mine so you got kind of good taste oh uh, okay <laughs> hey. See? See how I spun that into a little personal gain for myself, like a selfish dick? And that's true. That's true. Uh, you did. Oh. You, you did. You did it. You figured it out. Classic Rob. Right. Fairly typical me. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think I did. I, I feel like I was very, very nerdy in the way that I, um, my 13th birthday party was a Star Wars birthday party. Wow. And n not very many people showed up because I don't, what? I don't think, no, I'm not kidding you. I don't think that that was really what everybody else was into. At my age. So what year was it when you were 13? Uh, 2003. I mean, the, the, the prequels were out by that point. So, or no, were they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that would have been, what, a year or two after uh, Attack of the Clones came out. And I love Star Wars. And I was obsessed <clears throat> I used to just sit and sketch Star Wars characters all day long. I had a binder of Star Wars characters. L loved Luke Skywalker. And I my whole bedroom, like I shared a bedroom with my sister. My whole bottom bunk was just Star Wars artwork I had done or posters and stuff I had gotten. I loved it. I, in a way, that's kind of like, that's like nerd girl, but like, that's like, the kind of girl nerd dudes are always looking for is like this chick like Star Wars. She's not drawing like Barbies and flowers and unicorns and shit. She's like Star Wars. <laughs> I gotta get to know her. But then, like I no, I can't go talk to a girl. I'm, oh my I, gosh, Daniel Goodwin, ha ha ha, Han Solo B day party. Yes, that's exactly what it was. My Han Solo birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That is great. That is great. Uh, yeah, it hurt at the time, but now I can laugh about it. I guess uh, that is that is hysterical. On solo. <laughs> so here's my thing. At the time, this is what gets me. I will say this. This is what kind of bothers me. I used to get teased a lot. I used to wear a necklace that said Star Wars on it too, but 
I used to get teased ruthlessly for liking Star Wars and being a teenager and liking Star Wars. And it wasn't like, oh, the like guys didn't like me. They thought I was weird. So now everybody's like, oh, Baby Yoda and Star Wars and Disney. <laughs> and I'm just like, are you kidding me right now? Really? Dude, I don't know what kind of dudes you were hanging around because the guys that I know and me, I'd be like, hello, dream woman. <laughs> What? Like, no, for real. Like, for real. That'd be like, hello, dream woman. I, um, I guess, but... Oh, thanks. Since we fall in bed there. <laughs> yeah, I mean... You kind of have to find your, your crew, you know, your people that go for it, like, like the same thing. I guess I was... And I grew up kind of in a... Oh, I'm in a pretty small town in Indiana, so I guess maybe there just weren't enough people like that. Uh, yeah, it's like you're area and your proximity to certain people it just yeah it was just horrible so yeah uh it, the one guy here mooper son he says after rob did a few of those new mutants episodes my neighbor uh, my neighbor had a yard sale and i picked up a bunch of the life belt stuff terrible stuff and you know uh, what it's old shit that i like too it's still terrible <laughs> but yes Chuck Lee says he's in California and I never see a comics at a yard sale or flea market because everyone is a collector. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. And Courtney was obsessed with Sonic as a kid, she says. Oh, for real? <laughs> I know a lot of people that are into that Sonic character. and I, I mean, I never played that game system, so I never really had a I connection. I had a Genesis. It was like, I got it from my older, my uncle. And I love Sonic. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess, I don't know. I was, I, people thought I was weird. That is just the, that is just kind of what happened to me anyway. But interestingly enough, I moved out to Utah and suddenly everybody like was super nice and like liked me. So Maybe it just was where I lived. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Chuck Lee's saying, I never met a girl that thought Harrison Ford was ugly. Uh, <laughs> and, that's true. That's yeah. true. Someone saying, in the town I grew up in, that sort of girl didn't exist. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like, there's tons of guys I know. They're like, that's the kind of girl we're all looking for. Like, we all like the same kind of shit. And um, it's kind of hard to find that person. It's more prevalent because, like, that pop culture stuff is more widely accepted. And that bothers me, though. That's what bothers me. Maybe that's why I have an issue now. Is it's like, oh, it's pop culture. It's cool now. Everybody likes the Marvel movie. Once everyone likes it, now you can't. Well, I still can like it, but I just think it's just like, well, where were you when it wasn't cool to like right. it? Yeah, I get that. It's like, why? There's a certain amount, probably a lot of these people were like, when they were younger, probably made fun of the people who liked it. But then now that it's out there, like oh now it's cool because you know there's a marvel movie with spider-man in it it's yeah. like we like shit when no one knew right like you know i'd be quoting batman the batman movies or something and oh i was just a weirdo well <laughs> whatever now everybody likes batman you can buy it at walmart <laughs> you showed them you're an og yeah but like i don't know it, it annoys me clearly I can't. I can't detect a slightest hint of bitter in your <laughs> voice see, at all. I'm looking at like these guys commenting. They're like, "I was about the only person who cared about comics and all that." Yeah, like I don't know. It didn't used to be like this cool thing. I remember I moved out, grew up, moved out of my house, and I came back to hang out. You know, just to be, you know, hang out with my family for like a couple weeks. And my brother was dating this girl, and she was wearing, you know, <clears throat> a Spider-Man shirt or something. And she was really big into, um, she well, she said she was really big into, you know, comics and stuff. And I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool, you know. And so I started talking to her. And it was just clear, like, she had just gotten into this stuff because it was cool now to, like. Right superheroes because oh they were doing the marvel movies and 
you can say if you like started asking like oh you know that story where peter parker did this and she'd probably be like who's peter parker <laughs> exactly exactly it's how i felt you're like i'm sorry that's actually batman i'm sorry and clark kent is this guy called batman and clark kent <laughs> I'm just, yeah, so you should throw them off. So when they go to throw their knowledge down to somebody else, they got it all backwards. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. I know. I just, and I, again, I didn't, I own the fact that I didn't read a lot of comic books. I did read some, but, yeah, I don't know. Mr. D-Man says, nowadays, girls are all into Star Wars, ironically, just like you're saying. Someone yeah. says, I had a goatee before Tony Stark. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and Courtney lost a loose. She's like, uh, she's like, that's how it is with goth fashion. People would always get made fun of. Now everyone loves it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Uh, I don't know. Just ridiculous. It's so difficult being le like legit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I am. Their authentic selves. Right. And took all the bullshit from other people. Right. And now their things are cool. I don't know. <clears throat> anyway. We're, we're not bitter about it at all. We're very well-adjusted people. <laughs> right? Damn hippie. I say that all the time. That's one of my favorite lines. What is? I missed it. Uh, he was... So... Um, Someone, was it someone saying, I had to go before Tony Stark, and then Daniel going goes, damn hippie, that. <laughs> yeah. I say that all the time. That cracks me up. I can hear you saying that. I can imagine, you damn hippie. Damn hippies. That's because that's what my dad always would say. Oh, the hippies ruin the country. So I always say that to him. <laughs> Anytime something goes wrong, it must be those damn hippies again. Ruin the country. That's great. So how's your painting coming along? It's coming. I'll probably do a background and then I need to, the hair is going to take me so, a while, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. I think it's okay. I don't know. What yeah. Do you think? I'm digging it. Any, any critiques or advice? Because sometimes I feel like I see it as, again, what I see in my head. And then... Oh, this is like super crooked. I didn't even realize that. Sorry. I mean, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> Do you like how quickly you're done with yours? And I'm like, this is, I'm not even close, but. I kind of, I'm looking to see if I can find, um, just for giggles to show the reference that you are using. Oh yeah. Yeah. That right there. Yeah. That's the one. Kind of grainy. She got a lollipop. She's not smoking a blunt. It was very innocent. Very innocent. Mm, I don't know that there's much. <laughs> she might have been topless, but she was very innocent. Topless, but innocent. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's the name of a, that should be the name of a book. Oh my gosh, topless but innocent. Right. People have to pick that shit up. <laughs> like, I gotta see what's in this. Oh, so, uh, Stanley Gerwin's asking if you've got a P.O. box and he can send you his comic book. Hey, I don't have a P.O. box, but if you, uh, if you, for real, if you, if you have like a thing you want to send me, I'll, I, I'll be happy to look at something. Um, I'll, I'll throw it up on the channel if you want, and, like put some eyes on it. Um, as long as you promise not to send me like a like a bomb in the mail, I'll just you can send something to me. I've had a couple of guys send me some stuff, some comics and um, some stuff like that. I, you know, I got to just say that I've, I'm humbled that I've had the the reach that my channel has 
done. I've had people like ask for art advice. Oh my God. I just remembered a guy sent me a script. He'd asked me to read. And I completely forgot. It's been like a week. Wow. I'm a horrible friend. Um, but, um, wow. but you know, asking me for art advice or how do you do this? Or I've had one guy send me two stacks of comics to review. Like he paid for them and sent them to me. Um, had guys send me some artwork that I inked and you know what I mean? It's just, it's kind of turned into this like fun, like, like little community of like artistic and fun. You know what I mean? I don't know how else to put it. Yeah. So, and I'm very happy to read anybody's um, stuff. So yeah, Daniel Goodwin, if you want to hit me up on Instagram, I can certainly, uh, we can, you know, figure that out. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I do think that's kind of neat because you've had so many people, or at least a few people, send you stuff. Yeah. It's it's kind of hard to be like, you know, have someone like, hey, can I send you this? I'm like, I mean, if you want, yeah, yeah I, I mean, are you sure? <laughs> you know? But I think people kind of like, you find someone who has like like-minded interests. Yeah. You know, and you kind of want to like, oh, why not? Like, let's, let's, let's kind of share these things and... And we were talking, you might do this painting next, maybe, maybe. Yes, I actually almost, oh, uh, they want your Instagram handle. I almost did that one first, but I kind of thought this one would be kind of a, I've never done anything in this pose before. Yeah. Not that I have necessarily that one either, but. Yeah. I mean, I put that drawing on that cover of my uh, sketchbook that I put together that not one person has bought. <laughs> of course, I don't. Oh. I, I don't show it that much. So I guess maybe if I put it up and show it and anybody's interested, but. Do you take it to comic? Or, I'm sorry. I learned, I learned it's not called comic con anymore. Fan X. Fan X. Yeah. Cause I'm a loser. Apparently the last name I went, it was called comic con. Yeah. The big lawsuit. They had a lawsuit. Uh, Brandon Duncan, my uh, Instagram. If anyone's curious, um, I even wrote it down here last time. It's, Norton one two zero one three, and I think I'm clever because the one two zero one three spells Rob in numbers. I think I'm clever. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not, but I tell myself. <laughs> My mom thinks I'm cool. My mom thinks that is nerdy. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, I guess I could show the reference I'm using. Um. Okay. I did this one. Turned out really well. That's Make the. Make sure you show like her like handle and stuff so she can get. Just wants to follow her. Right. I mean, you are using her stuff, so. It's Garf Gains, G A R F Gains, because you know she's gaining muscle, I guess. But yeah, that's the reference that I was using. <laughs> the thing. Your mom paid me to say that. <laughs> hey, my mom's a sweet lady. And she probably would do that. <laughs> my goodness, I'm laughing and shaking. Hey, don't be laughing too much. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't. Is that a mom joke? Should I be insulted? It sounds like your mom paid me. Mm. Well, you did say that your mom thinks you're cool, so. She does. She does. She doesn't know the bad things her son has done in his life. She probably knows more than you think she does. The thing is, is she's probably done some fucked up shit in her day that she doesn't tell anybody, which I applaud. I want her to be. <laughs> I'm like, mom, you need to be a little bit more dangerous. I'm going to so... give her the link to this, this video. <laughs> right, right. You're like, hey, Mrs. Norton, your son had something he wanted to say. He had a lot to say about you. At this time code right here. <laughs> and I just thought you should know. Yeah, you know. Uh, Brandon Duncan, if you're asking me if I'm an Alan Davis fan, um, no. Oh, I'm not. Man. And there's a reason I um, I can see the absolute professional quality in his work. 
I could see the skill. I could see how he's a billion times better than I'll ever be. But his work bores me. And I've seen it so much. And like, I just, like, if I were to see like rough black and white, like the comic work that he does in its raw form, it's way more interesting to me. But in a comic book, colored up and words in X-Men or Excalibur or whatever, like, I just, I don't like it. But I can respect the skill, but it just doesn't inspire me, if that makes sense. So... Someone saying, seriously, though, he says, you seem cool enough, but you have to remember, I'm a nerd. Like, hey, all us nerds can get along. <laughs> right? Will we better? So you feel like you're pretty close to being done with this one? I think so. I don't know if there's any more I can really do to it. Um, I mean, I guess I could do some background like someone else was suggesting. Um, I'm kind of staring at it, trying to decide, you know, like, what, what do I want to do? What? Um, yeah. It's kind of hard for me to decide what else to do to it because I got what I wanted out of it. Like, I got to do a final drawing of the design or at least one version i've got some others that are very similar but slightly different i'm trying to decide like i had one time like a like a kind of like a skirt on her that was kind of like down the front and down the back you know what oh, i mean yeah. but, I, but i don't i don't know if i like that i mean i liked it but i don't know if it fit what i wanted um it's hard to say it's so hard to decide but again there's no rush i got another 120 page comic to draw before I have to worry about this. Right. But designing, I feel like designing clothing and armor can be really, really hard. Yeah. That's why I usually just don't draw any of the people with clothes. <laughs> no. like neck down. <laughs> it can be difficult. Yeah, she's got a Wonder Woman vibe to her, and I'm I'm kind of trying to avoid that. I don't know if I like this headgear on her. I mean, I kind of do, but I don't want it to look Wonder Woman-y. Woman but well, if you know, she's going to be she, I feel like you need to have some piece to her that still looks like her headpiece, but maybe not quite like like her. Headpiece. And that's why I have this <clears throat> thing because you know she got these like big weird feather helmet thing that she wears and. I got so sick of drawing it. I so will my, say, her piece across her forehead does look like Wonder Woman to me. It what? It looks like upside down Wonder Woman to me. The oh, yeah. Her um, head. Yeah. But I don't dislike it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I think it still looks good. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's just a, you know, it's a work in progress, it's a design in progress, it, who knows where it'll end up. Yeah. I'm sitting here actually thinking about doing some of my Copic markers on it. Ooh. But I'm worried that the Copic will start smudging the ink. Oh, yeah. Because some of those alcohol markers can start smudging it, and then... Is the, is... Does the waterproof ink doesn't handle the alcohol? Well, yeah, some of it doesn't. Some does and some doesn't. Because um, I use these two different types of pens. I got Microns and then these Pit pens. And I can't remember which one, but one of them would smudge when I'd use the um, the Copic markers on it. Oh. That's why, I like, Adam Hughes, you know who he is. He's one of my favorite artists. I think I've seen him. He'll draw the drawing in pencil, do the Copic marker tones, and then do the ink on top of it. Okay, I was going to say, I wonder if he had done it the other way, if it would have been better. I actually... One gal that we follow on Instagram, that Carly. Yes, she's doing her competition, that speed competition this week. Oh, really? Yeah, where she... It's like all the... It's a illustrator competition, but it's speed. 
anyway, I, just trying to. I can have, but I, how she does like color first, and then to me that when it, she's doing the color first, it kind of looks not great. But yeah. as soon as she starts that black ink on top of it, suddenly becomes perfect. Oh, I know. That's so cool to me. I kind of feel that way about when I do paintings. I feel like the first, like, when you put down the paint, it's like, oh, my gosh, it's so blocky. And it. Oh, yeah. Spider-Man is the hardest thing to draw. <laughs> yeah. Um, Those you, lines. You, oh, my God. Talking about this, actually. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I feel like it's it's cool to see how, you know, she'll do the markers and it's just like, oh, this looks like something that, you know, wh where is she going with this? I remember when I first sent you her art, you were you even said, you're like, I was kind of like, uh, okay. And then you watch the end, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For real. <clears throat> I, like, this, no, this is not good. I mean, it's okay. What do I know? But But suddenly it just came together perfectly i'm like oh shit and you got one of her originals i do actually hold on like right above you uh-huh you can kind of see it there i got to pick it out i won like a one of her little competitions she did it's hard to kind of see here but it's the mummy one i thought it was super cool that one's the one that i sketched that and then rob inked that one I thought you were gonna say some chucklehead screwed it up on the inks. Yeah, well that too. But that, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just tell you you screwed it up. I don't really need to be all right. No, how to tell you, Rob. You uh. ruined it. <laughs> I can't wait to ruin that other one whenever you get the opportunity. I know it's a lot to get I up and out and it. what's that? Um I uh, I need to send it to you. I know. I was thinking about sending you that, and then I need to send you that other painting that I did. Yeah. Well, and, again, don't rush. I mean, it's I know, but it's been a while. <laughs> you know. Like, We've been, I, I know. <laughs> been deathly ill for like the last two weeks. I know. I still. I don't know if anybody can tell, but I definitely still have a cold. Like my ears are still all messed up. I don't know. You sound normal, but <laughs> that's good. Brandon Duncan says he appreciates my off the cuff, honest answer. We like what we like. Rob Norton today. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I try to be sure to mention, like, if I say I don't like something, like I've seen too many people online or just anywhere, anywhere, honestly, where people like, if they don't like the creative stuff, something someone does, they get personally insulting to the person who made it. Like, this person's a fucking hack. They're a loser. They're stupid. I'm like, you don't know the human being just because you don't like their work. But you kind of are like that with Rob Liefeld, though. Yeah. <laughs> but that's... Ray Dillon. Uh, sorry, just one of my uh, my buddies here. Ray Dillon. He missed the start. Yeah, we've been going for like an hour and almost, almost a half or so. But uh, Ray, hey, man, he does uh, these great live streams. Him and his wife, they're like, working professional like amazing artists and oh, wow. uh they do these live streams with another one of their buddies and and a guest star and it's always entertaining it's just super late at night and i'm like my ass has to be up at five in the morning so i'll occasionally watch the entire thing then i pay for it the next day but it's always <laughs> worth it it's always entertaining that's awesome That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else I can do to this drawing. So I have <laughs> Ray, yeah, I'm joining you in the pain the next day. You know what? I'm glad to join you guys in the pain. <laughs> because they suffer, because they go for like four hours on their live streams. What? Right, Ray? Is, I've never had one that's less than four hours, man. Wow. Why the hell can I not find... You hit 345 recently, felt quite accomplished. 
like you're whittling your time down. Like we're 15 minutes shy of our best time. That's wow. Um, Oh, yeah, Ray, you go next hour just talking with your buddy. Yeah, I get that. You know what I could ink is I could ink these fantastic character designs. There you go. Since you were so keen on the bird mask design thing that I was saying is so terrible. I mean, I don't know if I was so keen on it, but I didn't think it was as bad as you thought it was. That's all. Oh, man. Are we going to work on my background for a second so I can get my smell? I'm avoiding doing the detail stuff. And I need to do shading on her cheekbones and all that, but... Digging out all my old live stream drawings. I think you remember. I did this one live, right? <clears throat> mm, yeah. I think I did. I think you did. I think I did. And I did parts of this Rob Liefeld recreation on the live. Which is still Oh, on my yeah. That's the one you were talking about Spider-Man in. Yeah. Yeah. Then we got our guy on there was talking about he was drawing Spider-Man and how much he hates drawing those webs. I'm not going to point out too much that I absolutely did not bother drawing the webs on Spider-Man's costume right there. Yet. I did it on his face there, though. Yeah, Ray saying Rob loves Rob Liefeld. I do love some of his stuff. I do. It is not a lie. It's just... I can't... I can't... I can't. <laughs> Liar. No. <laughs> no lies. Yeah, drawing those webbings, you know, on Spider-Man's outfit from certain angles. I'm like, how does McFarlane do that? Back in the day when he would draw, like, by hand with ink as opposed to digitally. Ray, Mr. Digital Artist, Mr. Shortcuts. Just kidding, Ray. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. 100% kidding. Uh. Mr. Ray Dillon's art is legitimately fantastically amazing. And uh, there's no getting... doesn't matter the tools you use as long as the, the effort that comes out is genius. Who cares how it's done? How dare you, he says. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, both him and his wife, I, I, I guess, do digital now. And um, I can understand from a kind of an expediency kind of perspective, like you can get so much done quicker, you know. Right. Like filling in the blacks. You can just basically just outline the area and then click, boom, it's filled in as opposed to like, let me get a brush, let me go around it, let me make this work, and then you spill the ink and you goof it up and you got to white it out, and start over and cry and throw in the garbage. This is like you're describing me every time I do anything. <laughs> like I have an emotional breakdown every time I draw. Dude. They're like, why do you do it? Because you're like, because I love it so much. I do though, so I I get the draw to it too, because I do think it would be nice to be able to just say, "Oh, nope." Yeah, undo. Undo. Cut, paste, move. <laughs> oh, Ray, I've heard about that. He's saying he's jealous of Renee, his his wife. Renee's set up in Procreate, being able to rough an ellipse and turns into a proper ellipse. I've seen that where like my brother does that on some program. If, I, if I'm understanding what Ray is saying, like my brother will just take his digital pad and just freehand a circle. And then the computer will turn it into a perfect circle. Damn. So if you need to like, you, you don't even have to like get out a template or whatever. You just like, I use a cup, circle. an upside down cup. <laughs> for what? I use an upside down cup for my moons for like circles. <laughs> I mean, you just use whatever you can find. I've used plates. You know, I'm like, I need a big circle. And none of my 
my my templates that I have are big enough. So I'm like, I'm gonna get a plate from the kitchen. Yep. I remember when I was married, my wife was like, "What the fuck are you doing with the plate in the bedroom?" I'm like, "Don't worry about it. Just uh." <laughs> She's like, why is there ink on it? I'm like, just don't. Just just let me let me be, let me create. Don't worry about it right now. Uh, you were talking about earlier about those uh, space paintings with the <clears throat> spray paint. Right. And I remember using so many pot lids and oh. to make those different size pot lids. Yeah. That was fun because I was getting paid to do that shit at work. Yep. Were you there when I was making those giant ones? I was. You were there, okay. I was getting paid on the clock at work <laughs> to do these big space spray paintings. And then were you there when I drew all everyone's faces on that wall? I don't think so. Really? I don't know. What year did you do it? Oh, God, I don't know. It was 10,000 years ago. But there was the wall that you it walked in from the floor back to the manager's office. And there was everyone's face. Everyone in the store. I drew like 110 people. Oh, you know the- what? You might have. But you didn't draw my face. I, that's true. I would have remembered. Mm. Like, why the hell? You know what was the most difficult part about drawing everyone's face at work on a, on a wall mural? Is I had to go around and ask everyone for reference. Like, hey, I've got a camera. I'm going to take a picture, right? Yeah. Every dude was like, fuck yeah, here you go. Every girl was like, oh my God, I don't have my makeup on. Can I go in the bathroom and get done up first? Every, Maybe every that's why you didn't put mine on the wall because I would have said the same damn thing. <laughs> right. I mean, I get it. I, I do. I do get it. And I, and even the girls that were like done up and looked as good as they've ever done in any day of I have ever seen them, I'm like, you're fine. Like, they're like, no, I got it. I'm like, all right, you know, whatever makes you comfortable. They know you, you're not going to make them look crappy. So, I mean, some of them I had to stretch. You want to give me names? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Maybe. <laughs> well, like, there was one girl that had, like, a little gap in her teeth in her front. And she was super embarrassed by it. And I never even noticed it until she pointed it out. Uh-huh. But I, instinctively, when I drew her and I did her smile, I didn't even put it in there. And she's like, you didn't put the gap in my teeth. Thank you. I'm like, what gap? She's like, look. I'm like. I went, oh, God. <laughs> okay, so that's, yeah, I, I've i definitely done that where I've changed, like, changed things about people or not added stuff in that I would feel insecure about. But then I, then I feel like you just happen to not just actually notice it. But for me, I've done that on purpose when doing uh, portraits of people. I'm like, well, maybe that's offensive to them that I said, oh, I'm going to like not put this on there or like change their hair a little bit or I don't know. That makes sense. Yeah. I never know what's like, I don't know, acceptable. Well, I mean, I've done drawings of when some girls had asked me to draw like their portrait or like their upper head and shoulders and stuff like that. And there's like little parts where like, you know, this picture, this part on her arm kind of makes it look fat. And they're not, but just that angle kind of made it look that way. So I'd like just bring that curve in just a little bit more, just to just to angle it just a little bit differently. And um, I never had any complaints. I think it was on you did a uh, some art of a picture of me when I got in my navel ring <clears throat> done. And I swear you like changed my face just a little bit. And I was like, oh, I don't look as chunky as in the selfie that I sent you. (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember needing to do anything like that. But I mean, I I wasn't chunky at all. But I mean, at the time I thought I was. But, you know, looking back, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I was so, so tiny. But I just remember like that was the first thing I noticed. You're like, oh, I did some art from that picture of you with your belly button ring. And I was like, wow, I don't look as fat as in the self that I said. My face, it was my face that didn't look like a donkey. That's your own negative talk, talking, because <laughs> I don't well, think there was ever a time 
where you were as bad as your brain was probably telling you because I mean, you <laughs> did just admit to doing that. So yeah, it wasn't to you though. How would I know if you're telling me the truth? Because we're friends and I don't lie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just you're have like, to uh, leave. Uh, you're uh. like, tell me another one, buddy. Oh, gosh. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how this ends up looking. Decided to do okay. some green around the background. Yeah, green always works. Green for the weed that she's smoking. Wow, it just comes back full circle. <laughs> We're back like, to that again. Right, here we are. Probably won't be able to finish this. I'll probably have to hop off here, go make some dinner. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. You got to go a bit longer on this one than we did before. Yeah. I mean, I. It's been a while since because I've been sick and stuff. So somebody's been on the verge of death for two weeks and being selfish with their time. <sighs> you wouldn't have, I I wouldn't have been coherent. It would just been terrible. <laughs> but oh, I'm just kidding, sort of, mostly. Yeah. Sure. I did feel really bad though. I'm like, oh, I know I said I was going to do this, but man, I just feel like garbage. And like I said, I 100% like this is not a critical thing. Like it doesn't hurt my feelings. It's just that it's fun. Like you were saying, like yeah. this is like fun kind of decompression thing to do. Yeah. And I feel like if I like, I feel like I don't do enough art. Like I don't definitely don't work on it daily like I should. So it makes me have to do something you know are you saying you get to be difficult to be around huh does not doing art make you difficult to be around um i can be grumpy <laughs> i do feel like i i mean and i'm sure anyone who's an artist in here i do feel like it's definitely a therapy oh yeah i think I think most people would probably agree. I keep running into people that are like, I used to do it and I used to love it. And then life catches up and you just can't do it. And then they find it again. And you're like, oh, yes, there's a reason why I do this. I may not make money at it, but I have to do it anyway. Exactly. And I'm going to sound like a real girl here. Like, here we go. I don't know if I'm the one that's ever seen this movie or not. But in the notebook, I always really, really in this moment felt her, especially because I didn't do anything for so long, like six, seven years. When she would say, I used to paint. I never paint anymore. And in that moment, the line, the reason she's saying it is she's trying to explain that she doesn't feel right. Something feels off. And she just says, I used to paint. I don't paint anymore. And I used to think, oh my gosh, I feel that. I feel that that's just something that's missing. And I used to do it and I used to be happy. I'm not happy now and I don't do it now. So maybe there's correlation there. That actually makes 100% sense. I've never seen that movie because I'm not a girl. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. I just, it's, I never had a reason to watch it. But well, that... it doesn't have Ryan Reynolds in it. It does have Ryan Gosling in it, though. Uh... Oh, all right. Well, he's still hunky. <laughs> but no, just that line. I used to think, oh, wow. Like, I actually can understand where they put that in there. Like, it does make sense. Yeah. It, it reminds me of, um, you know, Kevin Smith is the movie director. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He, uh, he, he's talked about, like, there was this whole thing he did. He does these, like, live conversational things. He used to do them. He doesn't do them anymore. But he'd talk about, um, there was this great story he told about when his father died mm -hmm. and him witnessing it as much as he, you know, he wasn't there in the moment, but the aftermath. And he's like, my dad was the greatest guy. He was just a good, simple, honest man. And he died screaming. Oh. Because his dad had a heart attack in the middle of the night. I guess his mom said that after having a big party where they all got together and had all the family together in one spot, you know, 
mom and dad and and their kids and their significant others and they had a great family get together and then later that night after everyone had gone home in the middle of the night his dad had a heart attack and his mom said that dad just woke up screaming saying he's on fire and then he just fell back in the bed and was dead oh and so kevin smith is like that shit hit me like a ton of bricks he's like my dad was a great man and he died screaming so he's like so it taught me don't waste any time not doing the shit you want to do Wow. I you know, that. yeah, I was like, Oh God, that's, I mean, you know, my sister had to point out to me recently that my parents are in their seventies, you know, like, and that's all she said. She's like, you realize our parents are at this age. Right. And she just didn't want to say the rest of it. Like who knows, you know? So that's true. It's kind of like pursue what you want to do. And <coughs> You got to do what makes you happy. And sometimes all you can do is find weird moments to fit it in between life. Right. You know, work and kids and everything else in the world. But if you can find a moment to create, like, I hope that my kids look at all this shit that I do when they're older. I've, I've said this before. And like, I hope that they just look at this and go, God, I'm so glad I have this from my dad. Yeah. Yeah. You have said that. Like, you want them to, like, cherish that stuff and well i i just hope it means something to them yeah yeah i'm sure i'm sure it will um especially since this is something you've dedicated so much of your time to you know how much you love it <coughs> there's a comment for you on there jessica thank you thank you it's not even done yet so i really appreciate that because i I feel like the hair always is kind of difficult for me to make look realistic. I think it, I think, yeah, that's the hard part, you know? So um, I don't know how you figure it out in painting. Like I try to give like dark sheen and you just kind of learn like, learn like a visual shorthand on my drawing here, you know, and hopefully it just communicates the idea. But when you've got to paint it in values and tones, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, I uh, I really do appreciate that because I feel like that's always my, kind of my my difficult one. I just try to do darkest layer and then start to just kind of layer it with lighter different tones to see if I can make it look, you know, it's got light on it or that it's because I don't think anybody's hair is one shade. So, right. you know, try to figure that out. But thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, speaking of how you render hair. Um, I'm going to find it here because my favorite artist, Adam Hughes mm -hmm. book, which one of these days, I'm not going to put this book on the channel until I get a chance to sit down with you and do it. Now that may not come for a couple of years, but oh, gosh. why am I so lame? <laughs> oh, wow. But he, he did this hair right here yeah. and he says over here on the text, he says, um, um, he said, also, this was the cover where I figured out the obvious color solution that Wonder Woman's coal black hair can actually be any hue. Black hair takes on the color temperature of the light source illuminating it, which is why some folks appear to have blue highlights. It's the color temperature of the sky. He's like, I can make her hair any color that complements the color scheme of the cover. And I just, I read that and I was like, oh shit. Cause if you look at the colors in this, you yeah. can tell she has black hair, but it's the, the colors that are around her that are like reflecting off it. Um, yeah. So that's <laughs> interesting because you know, as someone who has dyed her hair a great many times, it's <laughs> interesting when you try to. So just what lighting you're in, your hair will take on whatever color of the lighting that's around it. So it's super cool um to see and it's interesting he's he figured that out like he took the time to yeah because you look at that picture and you would say 
even though it's she the he obviously used some auburn coloring sure in white oh her hair is black yeah but that's interesting that's pretty cool yeah and again i just i remember reading that because i've had this book for years and um, I don't know anything about color, but I thought that was a really fascinating point that he made. And I was like, I don't know anything about color. And and uh, Ray Dillon, he says, dang, that's some good info. Like, Ray, you are an amazing colorist, Ray. Like, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, Jessica, have you had a chance to watch that video I did on that Peter Pan book? I don't know if I've watched the one on the Peter Pan one, actually. It's It's been a couple of weeks ago, but it, it that book is where you know, here on our channel watching, there's a Ray Dillon, his wife drew it and he colored it. And I was going on about how it's some of the best coloring I've seen in any book ever. Like, okay. Ever. That's awesome. I have not watched the video, but you showed me this book now that oh, you're yeah. talking about uh, yeah. it. Yeah. Pictures or something, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, that Ray. That's what I said. He's a. These guys are professional artists here. So, yeah, that uh, book is. I would have. You were like, oh yeah, my you know friend and his wife did this, and I was like, what? Yeah, that's awesome. Daniel Goodwin says he's like, this is why I hire a colorist for real. I yeah. Yeah. Um. I uh. God, I wish I had. I. I. I uh. I got the that gargoyles drawing that I, I've been doing. I got the final colors from the guy that I hired to do it, and he really nailed it, but I only have it saved on my phone here, so I can't I can't show anybody. But, um, yeah, I can't do color. I'm not even going to pretend. Um, but, yeah, when you get a good colorist who knows what they're doing, you can really just like, oh, it's it's worth it. It's worth every dollar that you might spend to pay a guy. But color theory is just, I, I, I got, I got nothing. I have no idea. Color can be like, really hard. What's up? I do feel like color, color can be very hard to decide how to do it. Because all the colors that he does in this book, and it's all digital coloring. And it just, I sometimes, I don't know, like, I don't know how well this coming through in resolution, but like he paints in these backgrounds. At least I'm fairly certain he does. But like, look at this drawing that he did. He draws it by hand and then he colors it on fo in Photoshop. And it's just. Yeah, I love that one. It's but There's this one of Catwoman and he's talking about. Right I was going to say the Catwoman one. I <laughs> seriously was about to say that. Um, the goggles? Is that yeah. what you're talking about? I well, love that one. Yeah. He, he says, he says, I love using teal and amber together, like the amber color and teal. It's a pretty color combination. So I just thought that's like, I love this color over here, this highlight of a light source. And then she's mm -hmm. hiding in shadows in the city behind her. Like, I would never think of these colors. I just, I have no idea how anybody even starts. I, mean, I get it. You just practice and practice and try and look and observe and practice and draw and color and eventually you just start figuring it out but yeah it's like here's one where here's his black and white ink work on the face which looks great i love the hair and then he colors it wow the... yeah that one's so good he's so god i just yeah, I, uh, I'm very anxious to go through this book. And uh, like I said, I'm not going to do it until you're here. Because I think you will appreciate it on a level that doing it all online would not kind of match. Yeah, that's true. Oh my God. So, one of these days when the uh, opportunity presents itself. I will have to. Yeah. That. For sure. Yeah, that would be fun. God, I shouldn't have busted this out because now all I want to do is just look at it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, he's so good. Look at everything he does. A moment alone with your book. Right. I have a moment with my book of like Catwoman drawn by Adam Hughes. <laughs> he even does big screamy faces good.
Oh yeah. Look at the gums. I don't know why that's the first thing I saw, but it, well, it, yeah, it's kind of a focal point, like the the mm -hmm. the highlights on the lips and the the teeth and everything. It just stands out. That cat woman is iconic. Like, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, Ray, he got interrupted just as I started to tell him what an awesome colorist he is. But for real, Ray, like your work on that book, you and your, your missus is just like, it's stunning, you know. Awesome, awesome. Well, I will probably jump off of here. Yeah. Take a break from this, but. That turned out really well. I like your, I really like what you got with the painting and kind of like the, the, the wider highlight along the edge of the, on the, the where the face meets the background, that kind of like that lighter. Oh, you know, really? Kind of pop out. Yeah. I mean, I know you're not done, but. I, I wasn't, I, was, going. I planned on not keeping that. I just needed to get a smaller brush. <laughs> I, just, I, I, you know, I kind of like the edge lighting of it, but you know, do what you're going to do. But... Maybe, maybe I'll keep it like that then. Yeah. Maybe I'll keep it. <laughs> well, thank you, Ray. Yeah, man. I appreciate you jumping on my random, uh, you know, live here. And um, yeah, I appreciate it, Ray. You guys are, you and your missus are <laughs> just amazing, amazing artists. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, that, that, that's Peter Pan book was crazy. That was so good. Yeah. Give me a second to realize that's the one you were talking about. Yeah. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, hold up. All right. Well, thanks for having me on here. I'm going to check. Yeah. Out. But uh, awesome. It was super fun. Yeah, yeah, this was a lot of fun. And like I said, there's a lot more kind of conversation going on. A lot of people, you know, we had up to 17 people at one time. 17 whole people, you know what I mean? Wow. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. It was awesome. All you guys, everyone who uh, chimed in and helped, you know, fuel conversation of different things to talk about. So that's always good times. Yeah, that no, was great. It was fun. Have to do it again. Yep, definitely. I know. I'm all about this. So, you know, we can make it a, we can almost do a weekly thing if, depending on what we're doing at the time. So, yeah. I mean, this worked just as well as the Instagram for sure, if not better. Yeah. So, yeah. And I invited Courtney back. I told her if she ever wanted to jump back on with us, she's welcome to if she wants to. I don't know if she's still listening, but yeah, for sure. That was super fun too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause, She's really good at what she does. I even emailed her that drawing I did last time. You know, that profile of that face. Oh, yeah. She was going to color it up whenever she has the opportunity. So I, I'm kind of excited to see that. So. Oh, yeah, me too. That would be neat to see. Yeah. All right, Jess. Well, don't, don't want to keep you. I'm sure you got little kids. Yeah. Just bouncing <laughs> on the door. Like, Mommy, you know, where are you? Oh, they go to bed here in like an hour. <laughs> Oh, look, there she is. I don't know if you see Jessica. She's here. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. definitely should. That was super yeah. fun. But for real, don't feel pressured just because we asked. <laughs> but, you know, we had fun, so it's always fun if you wanted to join on again. Yeah. Thank you, Tim Tilly. Yeah. All right, then. In that case, I guess I'll jump off here, too, and um, I'll catch up with everyone later. Thank you, every everyone, for joining us. It's been fun, as always. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone.